All right. Good afternoon to all of the attendees. Well, good afternoon if you're in the East African region. Uh, good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you're tuning in from, and even those who will be watching this on replay. We are just about getting started. Um, some attendees are still coming in. Just want to welcome you to today's session. We'll be talking about leveraging your creativity. And I want to welcome you. I want to confirm that I am not a bot. I am not a robot. I'm a human being. OK, well, I shouldn't be touching my face. I didn't touch my face. Um, trying to observe corona, corona guidelines, you know, stopping the spread. So as you settle in, I want to confirm that you're also not a robot. So please, let's um, get to the chat area and just tell me where you're joining from. Um, just say hi so that I know you are here with us. All right. And I've seen a few people have started. Uh, so good afternoon to you, to and to everyone else. So please just send a comment in the chat box to let me know you can hear, you can see well, and that you are here with us. Good, af good afternoon to you, Keith, to Tony. And as you comment, I am going to start sharing my screen so that we can get started. OK, Samuel from Kenya, Kalibu. Welcome to everyone. Good. So I hope we are ready to have a good session this afternoon. So let me share my screen so that we can have something to guide us. And just in case you are wondering which session you've dialed in from, just reminding you, you're here. <laughs> We're going to be talking about leveraging your creativity. Um, and I know we have um, ADMI students, but we also have maybe some non-students. So welcome to you. My name is Robert Agufana Bell. I am, as it says on the slide, a transformational speaker. speaker sorry. I'm not a motivational speaker. And there's a difference for me. You know, a transformational speaker is someone who goes to a deeper dimension. So I'll tell you some good things today, make you feel good, but I'll also tell you some stuff that might not make you feel so good. So I'm your captain on this flight. We are taking a journey. Let's not call it a presentation. I'm not doing a presentation. I'm just your captain on a flight and I'm taking you to a destination, a better destination of your life. We will be cruising at just about 12,000 feet below sea level, below. We're not cruising above. We're not flying in the air. We're going down below the waters because in today's presentation, I'm going to go to deeper dimensions of your existence, deeper dimensions of your life to show you a different perspective on creativity. So I want us to go deeper. And in line with that, I want you to have a pen, a pencil, a notebook, a piece of paper. I want you to physically write notes. I don't want you to rely on memory because I'm going to be saying some things that you may not agree with, you may not understand at first, but I want you to take note of it. After all, that's how the creative experience and journey is, right? Something may not make sense at first. So please, I'm giving you a minute or two, get uh, your pencil, grab your notebook, because I want you to take notes. And I'll, I'll tell you why later. So please grab a notebook and a pen, and of, of course, you can leave comments in the chat box. There's a Q&A feature. You can ask questions there. I'll take questions throughout the presentation, but we will have a session at the end where I'll answer all of your questions. But if you feel that you have a question on something specific that I've said, you can drop it in the Q&A section, and I'll be checking it regularly to make sure that I'm addressing your questions. So please grab your pencil and your pen, and we will get started. While you do that, those of you who already have your pencil and your pen, your pens or whatever, your notebooks, the first question, I want this to be very interactive. As much as I have slides, the slides are just to guide the conversation. I'll be asking you some questions. So please respond in the chat because uh, I want to see 
where you are so that I know who I'm speaking to. So first thing that we're going to do, please write in the chat. In a very, in one sentence, when you are young, when you are young or younger, when you are a small child, what was your dream? And I'm not talking about your profession. I'm not talking about what you wanted to be in terms of work, but just what were your dreams? You know, what dream? Give me one dream you had. For me, I always had a dream of just flying in, this, in the air, you know, having some sort of wings. I like flying. I like going up in the sky. So that was one of my dreams, just flying. Another dream that I had was uh, just experimenting and trying something. I, I had a dream that one day I'll create something so a, a new product, something new, maybe the internet. You know, when I grew up, we didn't have the internet. We had encyclopedia, you know. I learned typewriting in school, you know, so those are some of the dreams that I had. Uh, what, what, just tell me one or two dreams that you had. Uh, one, actually. So I'd want to see a different responses. So Keith, you said um, you can hear me loud and clear. Great. Um, Barak says that his dream was traveling the world and flying as well. Oh, yes. So good, good. Welcome. So welcome to this flight. Please make sure you have on your seatbelts <laughs> because it's going to be a very bumpy flight. I can guarantee you that. But the other thing I can guarantee you is going to be a safe flight. We're going to arrive at our destination alive. Wow. We're going to arrive alive. And I love traveling. I love flying. I've been to many, many, many countries. And I can't wait to start doing that again. So that was a dream that I had. Um, so we have someone tuning in from Nigeria. Welcome. Oh, okay. Angela says one of her dreams was to marry rich. Okay. I don't know, did you mean you're going to marry someone rich or you're going to be rich when you're married? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure which one, which one you meant there, but that's a good dream. Um, I'm waiting for one more dream, just one more dream. Can someone else give me what their dream was when they were young? Or is still, it's, it's still a dream. And the reason why I'm asking this is as I introduce myself further, uh, I help people who have given up on their dreams to think freely to create unapologetically and to live abundantly. That's what I do in life, right? So I help people who have given up on their dreams get back in touch with their dreams. And I want you to think freely, to create unapologetically and to live abundantly. Now, notice in that, there's nothing about a profession. Now, let me clarify. My profession, I am an accountant. I am a pin carrying accountant, right? Yes, I am an accountant. And many people tell me, how, how are you an accountant? You don't seem like a typical accountant. And that's what we'll discuss in the, in the flight today, in the in-flight the in -flight entertainment, that your profession should not define you, right? It shouldn't define you. It should just describe you. So yes, I'm an accountant, but that's not all there is to me. I, there's so much more about me. And that's how I, I, I'm able to do that because I've learned how to leverage my creativity. All right, so there's one more. Um, wish that says make and fly my own helicopter. Awesome. Awesome. Can, I hope it's still a dream and I hope you're still working at it. Um, please, I, I would love to come help you make and fly your own helicopter. That, that's, that's powerful. That's someone who's thinking freely, creating unapologetically and living abundantly. So thank you so much for your dreams. I hope now you have your notebooks and your, your pens um, and that you'll be taking notes through, throughout the presentation. All right, so that's who I am. Um, again, my name is Robert Bell. I am an accountant by profession, by training. I am a very proud accountant. I am a member of ACCA's advisory council in Kenya. I chair um, ACCA's Kenya member forum for SMEs. I'm a member of ACCA's global forum for SMEs. I work with SMEs. I run a consultancy called SMIP Consultancy, where we focus on service-based businesses and entrepreneurs, particularly those in the creative um, industry and, and, and service base, as I said, we help them to break through the barriers that they face in growing their business. I, I help them connect the dream of the entrepreneur with the reality of the business. So that's what I do in a nutshell. Uh, you can find out more about me on my website, www.robertabell.com. And I will type that in the chat, but I'll also leave my contacts towards the end all right so that's who i am in a nutshell oh sorry there was one more alex said that i had a dream of owning land 
have a big house, specifically in Nakuru. Okay, I don't know what's special about Nakuru. Marry, have lots of children. Yeah, we're together with that. Be spiritually aligned and wait to die happy. <laughs> Alex, you, you must be my twin. Those sounds like very similar dreams to mine. And I hope you're working towards those, those dreams. All right. I just want to get my notes up. Sorry about that. Um, so that I can guide myself. Great. Where did it disappear to? All right, so let's get into it. And um, one more question just before I get into the heart of the presentation. I want you guys to let me know, what are you studying? Um, I, uh, most of you will be students. If you're a student, just start with the word student and say what you're studying. Uh, is it graphic design? Is it video production? I just want to have a better idea of who I'm speaking to. What are you studying? And if you're not a student at ADMI, you know, what profession are you in? You know, just, just let me have an idea of who's on the, on the webinar with us today. All right. So, so Barak is a student, it's graphic design and a side course in justice. Okay. That's very interesting. Very interesting. I would love to find out more how justice and graphic design work together. I hope you you can graphically design a new constitution for us, not BBI, but maybe something better. Okay. Uh, Tony says a student learning music production. Okay. Uh, Divine says she's a student at ADMI sound engineering. I hope my sound is good. I hope there are no clips on the sound. Um, I'm not a sound engineer, but I have a little understanding of sound. Uh, there's a librarian here with us, a university lecturer in business administration. Great. Welcome. Uh, another student, graphic design. Yeah, I figured we might have a few graphic design um, people on, on the webinar. And then there's another student, sustainable energy, sustainable energy engineering and climate, climate change mitigation from Cameroon. Wow. I have no idea what sustainable energy engineering is. Um, I kind of have an idea of what climate change mitigation is. Uh, great. And Carlton is a student. He's doing animation and motion graphics and VFX. I know that acronym. I don't know what it stands for, but I, I have an idea what you what you do. Um, Keith is a student of journalism. And okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for the acknowledgement that the sound is good. All right. So the reason why I ask you to tell me what you're studying or what you're pursuing what your profession might be is majority of us um, um, particularly the students at admi we hear a phrase or expression saying that you you're you're aspiring to be a creative or you are a creative but i want to start out today with the flight being very bumpy and i want to make a very bold statement you know and tell you that you are not a creative none of you here on this webinar as far as I've seen, is a creative, all right? Or oh, Samuel has come in and says that he's a father out of employment, all right? Sales and customer support profession. Okay, welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, none of you are creatives. And I say it very boldly and with confidence and ready to take all the backlash or you know, any lawyers in here might want to start debating me on that. And I'm ready for that. None of you are creative. What I can say, is that all of you, none of you are, you're not a creative, but all of you are creative. Okay, English, fine. It, it might sound like a small difference, but it's a very, very big difference, right? Usually, you see, in society, we have come to a point where we separate and say someone is a creative, someone is not a creative. And it gives this um, context that creativity is some sort of superpower that only the guys on the right side, you know, the right-brained people are the ones who have the permission, who have the access to this divine phenomenal called creativity. And the other guys here, accountants, such as me, you know, maybe you can say librarian, shout out to the librarian on the webinar and so on, we are not creative. And that's absolute fallacy, right? There is no one who is a creative and there's no one who's not a creative. We are all creative. We're all creative by virtue of us being a human being. That's my bold statement. Human beings are innately creative. It's what separates us from other species. 
Okay, let's, let's, let's look at what is creativity. Creativity means something different to every single person. I agree. But there's some generally agreed upon definitions by neuroscientists, by psychologists, you know, by the experts, if you would call them with all due respect, that what creativity really is. And I've put on the slide what creativity is. And for me, it's, it's creativity is this sort of duality sort of thing, right? It's about searching for information and combining that information. You know, I say that creativity is about creating dots and then finding the connections to those dots, right? It, it's something that our human brains does naturally. Being creative is something that we do, it's something that we are. It's not something that we have to do. So not because I haven't studied a creative course or I'm not in a creative profession means that I am a creative, right? Or even if I don't, means that I'm not a creative. We are innately creative as human beings. We do it in our everyday lives without noticing it. But because of our lack of understanding of creativity at times, we believe that only artists, musicians, and so on are creative type people. But it's totally not the case, right? If that were the case, creativity would not be the number one in-demand soft skill across all professions, across all industries. See, creativity is about bringing out your uniqueness. It's about really connecting your dreams to reality. And that's why I started by asking you guys, what are your dreams? Because for you to make that dream a reality takes creativity, nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else can make a dream a reality but creativity because it's something you've envisioned. Um, I've, I've forgotten who it was who said their dream is to have a big house in Nakuru. So that means you've already pictured where in Nakuru your house is, how big the house is. You know, that's imagination. Imagination is what starts creativity, right? And that's how we're able to convert our dreams into reality is by, you know, being creative. So what happens? We go through school. We end up studying something. Um, we're told either choose the sciences or choose the arts. But true education is not about excluding things. And I'm not saying we should study everything and be a master of everything. But education is about having equal balance to sciences uh, and to arts. You know, Sir Ken Robinson, the late Sir Ken Robinson, who passed away um, two months ago, he was a champion of you know, really bringing creativity back in schools. And he says, education is about balancing the arts and the sciences. And we're going to look at that um, more into, into the, the presentation. So I hope you uh, maybe agreeing and coming to my side a bit more that you are not a creative, you are creative. And every single one of you on this call, you're creative. You don't need a degree. You don't need permission. The fact that you're alive, you're breathing, your brain is functioning, you are creative no matter what sphere you're in. Let me summarize who I am, and I'm reintroducing myself to you. I am a champion of creativity, an ambassador of wellness, and a pursuer of excellence. That's what identifies me, right? It's not my profession. My profession doesn't identify me. So whether you have studied whatever you've studied does not make you less creative or more creative. Yes, I agree that some professions and some jobs does not allow you to become creative but we are in a new dispensation, the fourth industrial revolution, internet of things, where the computers and AI, robotics, machine learning is automating all the manual things that we used to do, and then allowing us, the human beings, to be who we're really meant to be, creative, every single one of us. So that begs the question, what next? The question is, so what should you do with this information? What should you do in life? Who should you be? Does that mean then we should not study creative endeavors or should we should study creative endeavors? No, that's why we're here today. It's not about, that's not the right question. The right question is, how do you leverage your creativity? You see, your creativity is something unique to you. As you saw in my definition earlier, and forgive me, I committed one of the, the on pardonable sins, I quoted myself in my own presentation. That, that's totally wrong. Um, so forgive me for that. But as you saw from my definition, it's about, creativity is about your, you com combining your uniqueness. There's no one else in this world who has the combination of your life experience, the knowledge that you have, the exposure that you have, the way you see things. There's just no one else. 
So how do you leverage that? And when you hear the word leverage, leverage has different definitions and different meanings. I come from a finance and accounting background. And when we say leverage, you're leveraging your debt or equity in a business to grow a business. You're leveraging other people's money to grow your business. In life, we say we're leveraging an opportunity. You're leveraging a situation or you're using something to leverage, you know, what you're trying to achieve. So creativity is not an end. Creativity is a means to an end. You, in order for you to leverage your creativity, you have to first understand that being creative is not the end. You don't study sound engineering or whatever it is, graphic design, and then say, I am a creative. No, you are already creative. You study graphic design so that you can leverage that innate creativity, that uniqueness you have in you to deliver value to whoever you're meant to serve. And that's why ADMI exists, isn't it? In your vision, right? It's about creating, turning your passions into profitable business that have impact. So you study a creative endeavor, in quotation marks, to have an impact. You're leveraging it. You are transforming the information you've been given. You're transforming the knowledge of graphic designing. You're transforming the knowledge of journalism. You're transforming the knowledge of accountancy so that you may deliver value. You'll deliver value, you'll solve a problem, you'll create value. And all of you on this call, particularly the students, especially students at ADMI, you are the engine to drive the future of Africa. Whether you're in Cameroon, Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, we need you. We need you to be creative, not study a creative course. We need you to be creative, to get solutions for us that will move Africa forward, that will transform Africa, right? UN reports show that the majority of the population in Africa are young people, right? By, I think it's 2035, 80% of the population will be young people, or they were already a majority of the population in some, some countries. But we're not seen at a leadership level. We're not seen at an impact level. Yes, we can fight for our position. We can fight for our acceptance, but we need to make our impact felt. So you're not here to just study a creative course and then sit back and just do that creative course. You're meant to have an impact. In other words, you're, you're not just here, and I'm not here to allow you to just have movement in your life. You're moving from one level to the next, one degree to the next, but without any motion. You know, I can move without, I can have movement, but no motion. It's like a rocking chair. If I just sit in a rocking chair, I'm moving. But there's no forward motion, right? And creativity is what drive societies forward. I say that we're living, to, we're living in the reality today of yesterday's dreamers. The people who dared to dream yesterday, not give up on that dream, are the ones who created the reality we're living in today. So my question for each and every one of you is, which reality will we live in tomorrow? Which reality will you live in tomorrow? Will you live in your reality or someone else's reality? You need to be able to move forward from just being a product to being a producer. You have to produce something. Leveraging our creativity requires us to be producers, to be problem solvers, and to another deeper level, problem finders. Creativity helps us to find a problem and solve that problem. Take note of the dreams you've said when you had when they were younger. What has happened to them? Have your dreams changed? What has happened? You know, there's a gentleman called Tolstoy who says, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. I would love to see someone tell me one of their dreams was about changing themselves. Right, and someone said yes. One of their dreams is to marry rich. Um, that's changing yourself, but at a deeper level. How are you changing yourself? The course that you're studying, how is it changing you? How is it changing you? You know, the things that we do do things to us. When I do accounting, it's doing something to me. It's helping me to understand that every shilling counts. Every there's nothing insignificant because if my balance sheet cannot balance, I'm not trying to get into too much accounting jargon, but if my books don't balance, 
that is teaching me that I can't take small things for granted. When you're studying in graphic design, in, in sound engineering, what is it doing to you? And I want to get some responses from you in the chat before we move forward. Whatever you're studying, whatever your profession is, what is it doing to you? What do you think it's doing to you? Let me check the Q&A if there's any questions uh, at this time, but I want to know one or two responses. The course that you're studying, what is it doing to you? I've seen there are no questions at the moment. So I'll just check in. As I said, I'll take questions as, as we go through. All right, so Barak says that what I study helps me understand to focus my pursuits around positive ecological impact. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love that. Thank you so much. Can we have one more? Anyone else? As I move to the next slide. Great. Thank you, Angela. Studying actually empowered me to live my own dream and not my parents. I love that one also. And I'm sure a lot of you who are studying at ADMI can testify to that. You see, our parents and the generations before understand that studying a career is about being a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant. You know, the traditional rules, which is what the education system pushes and pushes and pushes. For you to study what you're studying here needs some sort of deviation, needs you to be able to look for your own path needs you to be able to find some sort of purpose in life, needs for you to identify why are you here? What should you do? And, and that's, so it's not just about studying to not do what my parents did. You're studying so that you can find yourself. And I'm happy you said that because I'll, I'll, I'll allude to that even more as we, we go on in the presentation. All right. So here are three things that I say creativity does for us. There are three punches I say being creative does, right? And I want to clarify something as I get into that. I, earlier I said that we're all creative because we're human beings. But the challenge is a lot of us have things that block us, inhibit us from being creative. I say it suppresses us. We, our creativity gets suppressed from external forces, such as society, education system, sometimes our parents, you know, our culture, but also internally. There are things that block us from truly being creative. Self-doubt, anxiety, fear of failure. I, I want to stop there. I think you, you understand what I'm saying. At a deeper level, there are things that block us from really being creative. Acceptance. Can I continue? Acceptance by others. Validation. Validation by saying, hey, guys, I have this idea. I want to start this business. What do you think? You know, I, I, when I mentor people, especially young people, and, and, and mentor people who transition from employment to business, I tell them, never ask that question. That's a question you should ask yourself. You're asking someone to validate your own dreams. That can never happen, right? No one will ever validate your own dreams because they don't understand your dreams. What you should ask is, I'm thinking about starting this business. What should I look out for? What should I observe? What should I whatever? And if someone doesn't agree with our dreams, we, we let it go. So creativity gives us three things. It gives us knowledge of our purpose, clarity of our vision, and revelation of our value. Back to the inhibitors that block us from being creative. When I started this journey of championing creativity, I spent a lot of time in reflection. And these things came to me. I have no idea what what they meant at that time but i wrote them down that's why i told you to write things down today what if you might hear something that i say will spark a thought in your mind write it down when i did this it's only this year as a matter of fact very honestly about two months ago i like reading um, psychology journals and so on because neuroscience and psychology are very closely related to creativity and when I, there was a publication in the Journal of Psychology that talked about identity formation. And this is what they said. The identity formation process has three key things. One, discovering and developing one's potential. Two, choosing one's purpose in life. And three, 
finding opportunities to exercise that potential and purpose. Now, I've juxtaposed those two things so that you can see how closely aligned they are. When I read this, I was like, what is happening here? What is happening? We are meant to find our purpose in life, you know, to, to see where we can exercise that purpose. Going back to what I said, you don't study graphic design, sound engineering. Uh, I want to make sure I'm, I'm keep using the same ones. Let me find another one so others don't feel uh, left out. Music production. You don't study music production just because you want to study it. You study it because you've identified that this is the means by which you will be able to fulfill your purpose. This is the means by which you can express your passion, right? This is the means, music production is the means by which I can communicate a message. I can add value to not just my life, but the life of others. Your profession should never be your sole identity. That's what I'm trying to say. Creativity is what should bring out your identity, your uniqueness. That's who, that's what identifies you. you. Your identity should never be fully intertwined with your profession because your profession can change. So if I decide I don't want to be an accountant anymore, what happens to me? My identity will go with the profession, right? And there's some professions that I knew when I was growing up that no longer exist. There's some professions that exist today that were not there when I was in school. Research even shows us that 65% of children in primary school today will do jobs and have professions that do not exist today. This course that you're studying today, if somehow it was not there in the next 10 years, what will happen to you? Would you function in life? Would you still have a purpose in life? That's the question that you should be asking yourself. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to get into some science. I'm here to talk about creativity, but I'm also here to show you that science and art are not mutually exclusive. They are so intertwined. The reason why they're intertwined, and maybe we don't understand why they're intertwined, is because when we went to school, we studied science to memorize it, as we do other subjects. We didn't study to understand the meaning. And you can only understand the meaning by questioning things. And, and, and sadly, in our education system, particularly in an African context, questioning something, hey, you know, forgive me to say, you can't ask questions. How will you ask questions, right? So we don't get the full meaning of things. And I want to take you back to some basic science to show you why it's important to have an appreciation for science, right? Uh, there's a gentleman in Harvard called Drew Gilpin who said that education is designed to prepare us for life without a script, for a life with any script. Education is to prepare us for life without a script. As you study whatever you're studying, don't just study the context of the course, but study the concept. Study yourself, study how you fit in. When you do that, you'll be able to identify what is your uniqueness. There's so many music producers. There's so many uh graphic designers how does that help define you right you you need to have a differentiating factor and that's what creativity is creativity is your differentiator so when we talk about leveraging your creativity you are leveraging your uniqueness to uniquely position yourself giving yourself a competitive advantage and i can boldly but not confidently and boldly state, but without being, you know, proud or boastful that no one can compete with me. Absolutely no one. Because there's no one else like me. No one else can do the things I do the way I do them. The way I'm presenting today, I don't think anyone else can present like that because no one else is good at being me. You know, everyone else is taken. I just have to be me. And when I become myself and allow my uniqueness to be expressed, including the flaws, then that, 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 that works for me. No one can compete with me. And when I'm able to position myself like that, I will have impact. <sighs> Last thing I'll say on that is, I want you to avoid studying a creative course simply to become artistic or creative. Because you can be artistic without really being creative. I'll repeat that. You can be artistic without really being creative. What do I mean? I mean, you can learn the technicalities of a course of study, 
but still fail to be creative. You can be a music producer and you know how to produce music and so on. But if you're not creative, you're not going to have the impact you'd like to have. You can be a graphic designer. You can use the Canva. I don't know what you use for graphic design in the, the software, forgive me. But I know Canva. <laughs> That's what I use. You can use Canva and you can know, you can know the, the technicalities of color coding and blocking. And there's some technical stuff I don't understand. And you can know that. But if you're not creative in connecting your view of things, your uniqueness, solving a problem, then you, you have robbed yourself. You have sold yourself short. You have limited yourself. You have not allowed yourself to live abundantly. Let's go. I sum it up by saying creativity is an identity extractor. Creativity brings out your identity. I'm sure. Can anyone tell me in the chat? I know that you're still with me. Do you, does that statement make sense, that creativity is an identity extractor? When you engage in creative expressions, creative passions, creative activities, you somehow feel so whole. You feel so, at least I feel whole. I feel valued. I feel this is my space. Right? And even if my profession doesn't allow me to do that, I still need to find a way to express what's inside. Does anyone relate with that? Does that statement make sense to you? That creativity brings out your identity. As you're doing your sound engineering, as you're doing um, what, what, graphic design and animation, right? it's your style. You're putting your style. No two animators are the same. And the challenge we face is because we are full focused on studying the technicalities of animation or whatever it is, we want to copy the way someone else did it, right? Where you have to be able to find your angle, find your avenue. And I'm not saying just do something opposite from everyone else. No, I'm saying go inside, go inside and figure out what am I trying to express? I'm just checking to see if there's any question or response. Um, to make sure we're still connected and I'm broadcasting. Yes, I am. Um, so do you agree that, that creativity is an identity extractor? Okay. Getting some comments. Yes, we can really only originally create from our deepest unique spot. I hope you've written that down on a piece of paper somewhere in your journal. All right. Samuel says, yes, it does. Gives you a space where you can con comfortably and naturally, I love that word naturally, express yourself. You're expressing yourself, right? I want to show you an example of what I'm talking about, about bringing out your uniqueness. And um, I'm going to play a video. I've tested it, so it should work, especially with sound. It's just about two minutes, and then I'll come back to you. <laughs>
right, thank you for two minutes of attention. And just to give you context, you know, it was um, a BBC short clip on Pablo Picasso, you know, one of the very renowned artists of, of the 20th century, right? And Picasso is, is a Spaniard, he's a Spanish um, uh, citizen, but he grew up, he spent some time in France. And there were, during those times, there was a lot of war with the Nazis, with the Germans. So during the Second World War, Picasso, you know, he stayed in Paris and the Germans occupied uh, the city at that time, the French city. And Picasso's had a very unique artistic style, you know, that didn't fit well. You know, the Nazis didn't really like his, his portrayal of art, you know, because before then people, art was about sunsets and, and flowers, you know, very beautiful things. But Picasso here in this painting, one of his most famous painting, paintings, um, was painting about war, you know, uh, what was happening in the city at that point. Um, Nazi Germany had actually just bombed the city, right? And so he did an exhibit and he was off, often harassed by, um, there was this, this elite military unit, you know, for us in Kenya, something like GSU or Reke Squad, you know, they were the, the tough guys, right? The Gestapo, that's what the unit called. And so during one day, they came to search his apartment and the officer, one of the officers saw the photograph of the painting, right? And this, this painting, I, I can never pronounce the, the name of the painting, uh, you know, Gr 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 Grunica, uh, but you'll forgive me for pronunciation. So the, the soldier says, did you do that? And you know what Picasso said? No, you did. Powerful. Picasso was showing the soldiers and the world what they were doing. He was portraying, he was using his artistic abilities to communicate, to, to deal with the issue of humanity, to, to fight against war. He did it in a painting. And that's what sparked a new revolution when it came to artistic expressions. And, and I use Picasso as the example. I was trying to find some, you know, even more African examples, but I, was, I had a bit of difficulty. But this Picasso, allow me to use it, you know, um, was just showing us that, look, your profession, your artistic abilities, all those things, they must be combined, right? It's not about being exclusive. And, and, and you know, some people argue that Picasso was not technically the best artist. He wasn't necessarily the best, but his paintings had the most impact because he connected it with a purpose. He connected it with his life. He brought his unique style. You know, later on, he, he teamed up with another um, artist and created what is called cub cubism, you know, a new way of painting. I talk about that a lot in my book. Um, and, and while referring to that, I got a question during the video from Joyce. Um, she says, Robert, thank you so much for the presentation. I am an avid fan of your book, Blow the Lid Off. Uh, that's what you see here. Um, that's, that's my book. And asking me when is the next book out. Um, I hope the next book could be out next year. I'm, I've already started working on it. And it's going to be even deeper than the first book that I, I wrote. I'll, I'll tell you a bit more at the end of the presentation about my book and where you can get a copy. All right. So I, I hope that example of Picasso will speak to you in whatever you're doing, your sound engineering and everything. What are you trying to get out of it? All right. I want to get into the science and I won't spend much time. Please bear with me when it comes to the science. I won't take too much because I know I've caught you off guard. But just to let you know, I'm going to do science and I'm going to do a little bit of math at the end. We're going to do some mathematics because I want you to understand there's a difference between memorizing facts and understanding the meaning of, of knowledge, right? Knowledge is about grasping the meaning. All right. So here's a diagram of our heads, our brains. Those of you who did science, I, I believe everyone here did science, at least at high school level, yes? Um, I, I don't think there are any high school students on the webinar. Um, so everyone has a basic understanding of how our brains are structured. If you don't, you probably did at one point and you memorized it, you can even draw it when you're doing your, you know, your, your, a, your O levels, right? I'm sure you remember it. You remember drawing it. Uh, what these things were, maybe we don't understand what they were. And that's okay, right? You see this large area of the brain, you know, the bigger mass area is called the neurocortex and it takes about 80 percent of our brain space now you've heard expressions of we, we we're not using the the majority part of our brains this this is where it stems from sort of because the neural context is so wide and so expansive but it's not 
something, it's not an area of the brain that we can access just like that. You have to be intentional about it, right? And neuroscientists later now and recently have been looking at a field of study called neuroplasticity, right? Which says that our adult brains have the ability to continuously regenerate, create new neural connectors, be retrained, be strengthened, deal with the traumas of our past. You know, we have that ability in our brains, right? We have the ability to continuously change the brain matter. So you can't say because you failed math or you failed science mean you'll never be good in science. And I always tell people, never say those things. When I'm in my corporate settings, or I do trainings, I ask someone to give me a number. They'll tell me, I'm not an accountant. Oh, you know, I didn't do good in math. And some of these people fin did high school 30 years ago. Like I finished high school over 20 years ago. I wasn't good in math. Does that mean I'll never be good in math? No, right? Our brains have the ability to continuously change. So not because you're not good in something means you will never be good. And this is a part of leveraging creativity. You find where's your unique way. How can I better understand math? Maybe the way I was taught, or maybe the way I studied it, it didn't make sense to me. So I need to find a new way of grasping the concepts. That neural context is, is the area where we scientists tells us that is, is for higher functioning functions of the brains, right? Such as language and creativity. It's the seat of consciousness. It's where we actively think, where our consciousness sits. Now, in the middle part of the brain is, is what we call the limbic system. Right, it's made up of the hippo, um, hippocampus and so on. The amygdala, you know, the amygdala is our emotional center of the brain. I'm sure you've heard about that, you know. And then the hippocampus is our memory part. Now, this part of our brain is directly behind, you know, where you want to call our eye sockets. And its job is to just look for threats, you know, just to find out where are there any threats in our life, right? It's what activates the flight of or flight mode. You know, you get in a situation, you you freeze or you want to just run away. Like if I was had the powers to activate your videos and your mics, some of you would run away, right? And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying that's the reality. Some of us will run away. You know, that's, our, that's when we're in a flight of fight mode. We just want to run. We're being run by your emotions, right? And that part of our brain is not, is not the rational part of our brain. That when, we, when we're driven by emotions, there's no point, there's no time for rationality. As a matter of fact, when that part of the brain is taking control of our entire brain, it, has, it doesn't necessarily know the difference between reality and, and imagination. In other words, it doesn't, the fear that we're feeling, we can feel the same sense of fear with something that has happened and something that has never happened. How many of us are fearful or scared of something that has never happened, right? If you've ever, you've never ridden a bike, I'm sure if you, I was to ask you to ride a bike, you already start to feel the fear of falling and you've never even ridden a bike. You've never fell, but that fear is as if you've fallen. You can feel yourself falling. You know, that's what happens when that part of our brain takes over. Why am I telling you all of this? The reason why I'm telling you all of this is because when that part of the brain takes full control, it's impossible to be creative. It's impossible to come up with solutions. Because creativity happens at the neuro neurocortex area, that, that, that big mass area of the brain, um, that the darkish brown, that's the part of the brain that activates creativity. But if you're constantly using your lower brain functions, being driven by emotions, I'm studying this course because my parents didn't want to let me to do what I want to do. I'm doing this because of this, ETC. And if you live your life constantly in that flight or fight mode run by emotions, it's going to be very difficult to be creative, right? And I want you to understand the meaning of why this is important for us to know, because we are biological beings. We, all of us have brains, all of us have you know, brain matter. And if you don't understand how your brain and your body functions, it's going to be equally difficult for you to leverage and harness your creativity. It's important for you to understand this. And I'm not saying understand it like I'm going to come and quiz you but understand the concepts, understand the context, understand that when I'm feeling fearful, what is happening in my brain, how can I reverse that? And I'll give you one tip as we finish the science lesson. I told you, I'm not gonna stay long in the science lesson. Now that lower part of our brain, the back part of our brain is connected to our 
breathing our heart rate our lungs through what we call what science is called the vagus nerve when we are constantly in this fight or flight mode messages are sent downstream into this part of our body right it, and tells the body listen get ready there's danger there's problems you know what happens heart rate increases you start sweating you start shaking because now your body is responding at a you know at a metabolic rate it's it's getting ready and the, the reason the heart has to pump harder is because it needs more blood where does the blood need to go we have no idea the body doesn't know because the brain is just saying i need i need energy where you don't know i mean if you're lifting something heavy and you you know i i i like exercising you know and my trainer tells me i need to have mind muscle connection when i'm lifting the weights i need to make sure my mind is focused on activating this muscle so it will send messages and my heart will pump send blood to the muscle and squeeze through the pain and squeeze through the pain but if there's no connection between the upper part of our brains and our muscles energy is just flowing all over our bodies it has nowhere to go and then we feel sad then we can get into depression then we can just have very negative sort of emotions and one of the if if you want to call it the dark side of creativity is you know not being able to manage your emotions when that happens it really inhibits your creativity so it's important for you to understand this science the science of you right and and you need to know what are your triggers opposite of that is you need to know what helps you to become creative and i'll tell you one thing you can do for free take in a deep breath wherever you are i want you to stop what you're doing sit up right if you're sitting if you're lying down on your bed i can see you sit up on the side of your bed and i want you to take a deep breath just take a deep breath in and a deep breath out another one deep breath in and a deep breath out now what happens biologically when we do that is that we are sending a signal up our vagus nerve to our brain to say listen i am going to breathe normally because there's no danger the only how you can convince that part the lower part of the brain the limbic system that there's no danger is biologically you can't just think positively no i'm not scared no i'm not scared no i'm not scared and you're shaking you have to take a deep breath that's why strategies such as thinking to 10 counting to 10 taking deep breaths that's why you find people who are creative like going out into nature taking deep breaths or exercising i get a lot of ideas when i exercise cuz i'm able to control my breathing that's something you can do so easily so the next assignment you have in sound engineering and you feel nervous you you're stuck or you're trying to produce some music take a deep breath take a break and i can go into so much more science about why taking a break will help you to be creative but i won't do that here i just want to spur your appetite i told you this flight is going to be bumpy right and you're going to feel like you want to get off but i've locked the doors there's no emergency exit you're staying here until we get to the end okay give me a yes in the chat box if you agree with that you're staying on this flight till we get to the destination all right so that's why you need to understand the science of it right because this is how it will help you leverage your creativity so my question to you would be what are you thinking what are you feeling are, are your thoughts and your feelings connected this the dreams that you've had that you still have when you were young are they in sync with your emotions are they in sync with what you're doing are you working towards that the course of study you're studying will it help you to get there how will it help it to get there all right um seen in the chat yes at least one person has decided to stay on the on the flight um please put on your own oxygen mask but check on your friends um make sure no one is sleeping on this flight make sure they have not um they're not you know feeling overwhelmed so i hope you guys are still on the flight and um i'm still your captain please don't over throw me as the captain allow me to take us to the destination right so someone says wow an ms nbc journalist actually does this deep breathing for her show yes exactly you know i had to do that before i come here and i speak many times but every time i need to just calm myself down and ideas will just come out of my head last part of the science lesson when we let the emotional part of our brains 
take control and the rest of our body follows suit in this nervous state, the neuroscientists tell us we do something called downshifting, right? And downshifting doesn't give us that excitement of a challenge. When you're constantly letting this part of the brain take control, right, you will become fearful. But a creative person allows a challenge to excite them because they know I can find a way around this. And during this time of a pandemic, we need creativity even more because we need people who can stay calm and find a solution to thrust us forward into the new norm, not back. We need to move forward into a new norm. And creative people have that ability because they're able to calm themselves down. They're able to let their brains, the upper part of their brain, the neurocortex neuro take control. That's the end of the science lesson as we move forward. So was science that bad? If it was, it's okay. You don't have to agree with me. Take notes. You can come back and think about it. All right. <laughs> All right. So I want to transition um, one or two points and then we get into math and then I'll, I'll open up to Q&A. So stick with me. We're almost there. Take a deep breath. So who are you? All right. And I love this quotation. I would like you to read it for yourself also, but I'll read it. I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. I am not what I think you think I am. Sorry, I am what I think you think I am. Many of us have been caught in this identity crisis. We're not really who we think we are, right? We're not who you think we are, right? But for me, I know I am who I am. Right, that's who I am. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense. I, I, I always try to make sure this makes sense. And that's why I want you to take note and internalize it for yourself. Who are you? You're not a graphic designer, right? You're not a sound engineer. You are who you are. As I told you, I am a champion of creativity, an ambassador of wellness, and a pursuit of excellence. That is who I am. It doesn't matter if I have a job, I don't have a job. It doesn't matter if you tell me to go pack bags at that well, not Nakomati, I need to update my slides, not Nakomat, uh, Quick Mart, right? Or a supermarket. I will still champion creativity as I pack bags. I will still be an ambassador for wellness. I'll still pursue excellence. I'll be the best bag packer you've ever seen because that's who I am. And I use creativity to bring that out because I have to approach my task with a creative angle. So I've seen a comment that says, you're the first one I've heard explaining why we should take in deep breaths. Thank you. You're very much welcome. All right, I'm conscious of time, let me move. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi sums up that quotation very well by saying, you can read it for yourself. You know, you need to watch your thoughts because they connect to your actions, connect to your beliefs, connect to your destiny. You need to take note of that. Why are you studying what you're studying? What do you really want out of it? Where are you going? We've belabeled this question a lot. Those are questions for you to answer. Right, those are questions for you to answer. And this is what we said. This is how we feel at times. If we're constantly in a trap, will I get a job? Never study a course or subject to get a job. In this fast changing world, you will be thoroughly disappointed. Very, very disappointed. Instead, look to get skills that will help you navigate life, that will help you make an impact. As you've seen, there's so many ways that people can have a living and make money in this gig economy. Right? So don't, don't limit yourself to studying one course. Make sure you're well-balanced. So even as you study at ADMI, make sure you read widely. Make sure you understand. Read up on your history. Read up on your science. Understand. Find meaning in them. It's not about memorizing everything. Now I want to go to the math lesson, the mathematics. So let's get ready. If you're not good in numbers, don't worry. It's very simple, and I'm going to give quiz. So please be ready in the chat uh, or the Q&A, and I want to ask you some questions to answer. Let's go. And I want you to answer these questions. Very basic, very basic, all right? Okay, let's go. Here it is. What's the answer to this question? Five plus five. Let's see some answers coming in. Sorry, I muted myself. It's not a true question. Let me just get a sip of water. All 
All right, I'm seeing 10 coming in, 10, 10, 10, um, 10 in the chat box, 10 in the Q&A. Fantastic. I want to tell you guys who answered 10, you are absolutely correct. I want to increase the degree of difficulty a little bit. I want to increase the degree of difficulty a bit. Let's see who can get this one. Let's see. X plus Y equals 10, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Can I get some answers? The responses have come um, not as fast as the first ones. <laughs> All right, in the q and I see seven plus three. I see in the chat, nine plus one. I see eight plus two. Come on, let me, let me see some answers. There are multiple answers. Okay, good, give me some. Give me some answers, please. Seven plus three, six plus four. Great, 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 great. Now I wanna show you something. Many of us know this. We've memorized our numbers. We know our number line. But in life, we've been so mentally prepared to look for the answer, one answer. So we always look at questions from that perspective. Five plus five. It can only be 10. And in life, we have figured out that, oh, I've seen another answer, 10 plus zero. Yes, that's a great one. Unique. You're, you're getting out of it. In life, life doesn't work that way. And how to leverage creativity is by reframing the question. Do you, you see when you add five plus five, what you're saying in life is that I only have five and I can only add five. So obviously you can only get 10. And that's what happens. If you do this course of action and this course of action, you will only get 10. But creativity helps us to reframe questions. I want to get to 10. What do I need to do? What do I need to combine to get to 10? And you guys have said it. 8 plus 2, 7 plus 3, ETC. We know that. But I want to show you something. That we did math. We understand math. But do we understand the meaning of math in our lives? Let me show you. Coming up. So many of us said 8 plus 2. What about this? Hello, guys. Um, let's study something in math called negative numbers, right? Can I get some answers? I've given you a tip. So my answer is negative 4 plus 14. Am I correct? Can I get some more answers? I didn't see anyone say a negative number. Why is that? Why is that? I'm seeing the Q&A. Yes. Okay. My answer is correct. Thank you. My answer is correct. Good. I'm not good at math, by the way. No. Scrap that from the records. Please edit that out. <laughs> I am getting good at math. I am getting better at math. Yeah. So I'm seeing answers. Um, thank you. You said my answer is correct, Brian. Negative 15 plus five. Yes. And the possibilities are endless. But you see, we, on, we knew that you can add a negative and a positive and get a positive or even another negative. The, the possibilities are endless. But why did our brains not go there? Because we were focusing on the memory of getting the answer. But creativity is about connecting dots. So even if you have a negative in your life, a negative experience, you failed your exam, you, you didn't get the school fees, you didn't get this, you can still combine it to a positive and get a positive impact. We've seen that in some of the wonder, best entrepreneurs in the world. They dropped out of school or they didn't have school fees or they grew up in a difficult circumstance, but they turned out to have a very positive outcome because they just worked hard on the positives. It's about maximizing your gains. Ah, Brian, Brian is saying, you can say four plus um, open bracket three times two. My friend, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Let me move along and show you how deep this can go. When you open your mind to possibilities, when you leverage your creativity, you need to think of it. Don't just think of math as some abstract thing. Math, by the way, if you can understand math and algorithms, you can be what, some of the most successful people in life because you see connections. Creativity and math go so much hand in hand. Maybe I should write a book about that. that, that that'll be a, that's a good idea. Thank you, guys. All right? Look at this. I've shown you negative numbers. Thank you, Brian. You've, you've gone into brackets and showed three times two. 
what we've learned negative numbers in school. We learned decimals in school. Is that decimal not a number? I didn't say whole number, but our minds just immediately started thinking of whole numbers because that's what we were shown. Because I showed you five plus five, you just followed suit. Your brain just followed along the line, you know, like, like lulled, I just lulled you asleep. And creative people don't get distracted by what they see in reality. Creative people focus on what they see in imagination. What are you seeing in your imagination? Bring it out. Don't just follow. Everyone is doing this, doing science, doing engineering, doing accountancy, doing law. Creative people look deep within. We learned decimals. Now, Brian, you, you might have got a copy of my notes. And the last point, I'll tell you how deep this can get. We also learned this. Two squared. You see, you don't have to have a complete number as a, I, I still have one plus. I only have one plus, right? I'm only add, adding two arguments, but one argument can be so deep. And that's why I'm a transformational speaker. I go to deeper dimensions. What are those deep dimensions in your life that will help bring out your creativity? And that's what will separate you as a sound engineer, separate you as a graphic designer, separate me as an accountant. Two squared plus something gives us 10. Who can give me that answer? Last question. Last, um, last what do you call it? Uh, Quiz. Let's see who can get that. Uh, we should give a prize. I, 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 don't, I don't know who, what prize I can give. I hope um, my moderators can help me get a prize. Correct answer. Bam. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Good answer. Six. People are telling me six. Okay, interesting. You guys are very correct. So let me wrap up this math lesson. Um, sorry. Oops. Oh, I think I missed one part. But you can even expound that open bracket into endless possibilities. You can do two squared, open bracket, the root of seven divided by four times three, blah, 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 all that in one bracket. Have you ever used Excel? You can have one argument and in that argument have endless arguments. And so no matter what is in your life, no matter what inputs you have, you can combine them and get a wonderful outcome. You can get a 10. And I use 10 because it seems like a, you know, that's where our numbers and our, our fingers and our toes end. That's what math means. It's not about memorizing five plus five. It's about understanding how to combine. I'm going to wrap up so we have um, some Q&A. So get your questions ready. Um, mindful of time. All right. One caution, though, guys, as much as you are working in the gig economy, you're using leveraging technology, don't let technology, you know, just rule your life. All right. Don't. We talk about social experiment. I take breaks often from the, the digital. And there's so much science behind it as to how that, it can aid creativity, but it can also impede creativity. All right? So just a caution there for you guys. Last statement, and then I close. All right? The only thing special about those who transform themselves and their lives is their view of their own future. They refuse to be defined by the past. They see something bigger and better, and they never stop fulfilling that vision. Every single day, they maintain their vision of faith and hope and take courageous steps in that direction, accompanied by much failure and pain. With each step forward, their confidence increases and their identity becomes more flexible and less constrained by what was. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for allowing me to take you on this flight. We have arrived at our destination safe and sound. Troubled, <laughs> but encouraged, and hopefully transformed. So thank you very much for listening. I will now take questions. Um, I did mention that I, I wrote a book, and you can, I'm giving a special offer for those who are on the webinar today, a special price, the normal retail price for the print copy is 1,600 shillings. Those of you who are in Kenya, um, this is a copy of the book. It's real. It's a real book. There are people on here who have read it. I go into much more detail about this presentation. You can grab a copy. There are the contact details. If you want an e-copy, it's available on Amazon. You can just Google, blow the lid off. You can get a digital copy, those who are not physically in Kenya. And I've made a small request there. If um, you've gotten content and value from this presentation, Please, you can support the voting of my book. It's been nominated for 
a Reader's Choice Award in the US, um, a very prestigious award. Please support, you know, fellow African authors to show the world that we are global thinkers. I will stop there and now take your questions, comments. Thank you. Okay, we have a question and he says, um, what does a true education entail from your understanding? Hmm, that's a very good question. I talk, I talk a lot about what true education should be. And for me, true education is something that helps us to identify our purpose and to develop our identity. True education for me is not about the quantity of knowledge, but it's about the quality. I'm, I'm still answering your question and I'm just building up to it. You see, true education for me is something that teaches me how to learn, not what to learn. It teaches me how do I navigate? It teaches me how do I continuously uh, pivot in life? Because it teaches me how to maneuver my way to life, relevant life. We live in a very dynamic world. And if education is not teaching me how to manage these changes, um, emotional changes, you know, dealing with different people, uh, working with different people, you know, collaborating with different people, if education doesn't teach me that, then it is not true education, right? It has to teach me all these things. For example, you know what, there's a, you, those of us who are in Kenya and, and other places, there's the big debate, should we open schools? Should we not open schools? Look, for me, it's neither here nor there. Education takes place whether you're in school or not. We need to just be intentional about it. Right now, and I'm going to shoot a video about that on my YouTube channel, I don't even think we should be teaching the curriculum when we go back to school. What you should be think, doing, especially for younger kids, I mean, for you university students, you can, you can manage that. But um, still, every single student, you know, whether in university, wherever, for me, you start back school, whether digitally or physical, for the first two weeks, no, no curriculum. We talk about what have you gone through? What have you learned? What have you struggled with? How can you better manage it? You know, people, you know, a lot of people might argue that, look, that's not the work of school and ETC, but school has changed, right? It, it, school has, schooling has changed, education has changed. It must have an impact and meaning in my life. That's what will be my answer. I hope I've answered your question. There's another question. What was or is the biggest challenge you face? Easy, believing in myself. That is and will continue to be the biggest challenge, believing in myself, nothing else. Because if I believe in myself, there's nothing that I can't do. I, um, I believe in God and, and that's, so if I believe in God and he has, I believe in God and he has given me abilities and strength and he can take me through anything. So if I just remind myself of that, I can do anything. I can do anything. So that's just the biggest challenge. Nothing else is a challenge. Everything else are just the way to the destination. The rest are just clouds, turbulence, rain, and that happens to everyone. The biggest challenge for me is just making sure that I can trust myself. I can trust what God has put in me. I can believe my uniqueness. I can believe that I am meant to do something. That was from an anonymous attendee. I didn't get your name. You can tell me your name. All right, I'm checking the chat box. Any comments, please um, also give a comment on what might have stood out for you. It's good to see what you got from this session. Um, it helps me also to better present in future and to know what people are connecting with and what you connected with. So I would appreciate if you guys can take some time to just write in the chat box um, what you're getting out of this. And if you're watching this on replay, you can comment wherever you're watching this. Um, I think this should be live on YouTube. You can make a comment. Um, questions, I'm free to take other questions. We have, I can see just about 12 minutes. I think my moderators told me I would stop at 3.30. So we, we do have some time. Or would you like to go back to some math or science? <laughs> 
or we can go to engineering. I can show you how engineering is related to creativity, but let me not overwhelm you today. You can get in contact with me. I did say I'll leave my contact details. Uh, let me just drop it in the chat box. I should have put it on the slide. I give you my website. Yes, I give you my website. And from my website, you can find my social media handles, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube also, um, doing videos on YouTube so you can get some content there. So there's a question from Brian Omolo. What are practical techniques to self-learn new skills? Practical techniques to self-learn new skills. The number one skill you need to learn before you start self-learning is how to self-learn. <laughs> So practically, how do you do that? Um, like what I ask you guys to do, write things down. Pencil, pen, whatever you want to call it, not digitally. There's so much science behind it that shows, and there's a quotation, I, I can't remember who said it, that the shortest pencil is mightier than the longest memory. The shortest pencil is mightier than the longest memory. Also, there's a Chinese proverb that says, look, what I see, I forget, all right? Um, what does it go? What I see, I forget. No, what I hear, I forget. What I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. But what I do, I understand. So to answer your question, Brian, the best practical tip to self-learn is by doing, is by engaging. That's why I told you guys to write things down, by doing things. By doing is what you understand. Um, you see, knowledge... Going back to the other question about true education, you see how brains biologically and neurologically does not grow and does not learn through absorption of knowledge. It, have learned, it, it grows through cognition and creativity. And you can only do that by taking part in something, right? You re read a textbook or you read something to get the knowledge, but the understanding of the knowledge comes in practicing it. My sound engineer, Brian, I, I don't know if you told me what you're studying. Um, I, I, I lost the, the note. Whatever you're studying, I, I think, I don't know if you're studying music production. I can, you can study all about music production, but I think you get there and start doing it, then you, you won't learn. So the best way to learn a new skill is just by doing it. Want to learn a new language? Do it. Doing, doing, doing. Hope that answers you. Uh, see, there's another question. Thank you. Samuel says that the math analogy really stood out. Creatives need to think outside of the box. Absolutely. But guess what? Don't even think outside of the box. Because when you think outside of the box, you're still using the box as a reference. And that's what we did with the math exercise. I told you 5 plus 5, then I said x plus y equals 10. Everyone still did numbers between 0 and 10. That's what you call thinking outside of the box. right? Or maybe the negative. That's still thinking outside of the box. But true thinking, it removes the box and start going to two squared, decimals, and, and so many variants. So yes, I'm just expounding on your comment. We, to be creative, you really have to just think. Even just, you, get, you need to get to a point where you remove the box. That's a deep, deep level. And, and that's what I do in my life. I don't remove the box. When I get an inspiration to do something, I'm convinced about it. I pray about it. I meditate about it. I do it. It doesn't matter if it's never done. It doesn't matter if people have done it and failed. It doesn't matter if the data says that, like at some point I get to a point where I even ignore data. Like if I, I cause I've learned to get that trust that when I get that inspiration, I'm gonna do it. I may fail several times and what I thought I meant to do may turn out to a different iteration. But you see in the creative process, nothing is ever lost. Graphic designers will tell you that. You do, you do a graphic design, even if the final product doesn't turn out that way, what you did, that, that failure was a lesson. You know? And in the creative journey, there's nothing called failure. The only failure in creativity is not bringing it out, not using it. Everything else are lessons. So thanks for that comment. Um, Divine, I hope that's I'm saying your name right. Divine says, no question, but something that stood out from the two minute video, what do you see? Yes, and she said, what do you see in caps? What do you see? From now on, you, you guys need to pay attention to what you're seeing. Reminds me of um, an expression someone said that, you know, creative people are not in a hurry to run through the forest just to get to the end. C 
creative people take time to observe the forest. How many trees are here? What type of tree is this? What is the alignment? What is the arrangement? What else could be here? Experience. Creativity is about experience. It's not just about outcome. So that's a good comment. Thank you. Uh, Carlton said, Brian, I've seen another question. I'm coming to you. Carlton said, Carlton Jenga says, you mentioned that you read psychological books or literature. Which ones can you recommend? Hmm. I'm currently reading Denial of Death by Ernest Becker. Hmm. Haven't read that one yet. So I don't necessarily read the books per se. I read the science and the research. That's what I read a lot. So I, I go through those long 200 page research papers. I, I, that's what I like reading. I, I like to understand the neuroscience, um, um, the, the psychology, the, the physiology behind how our brains function, how our minds function, how our bodies function, how creativity works. So that's what I read mainly. Um, as I said, Journal of Psychology, I subscribe so that I get updates. That, that's what I read. Um, and then uh, another person that I read a lot of is uh, Robin Sharma. I, I love Robin Sharma's work. It's lots of similarities with what I do. So I can identify and connect with that. He goes into some deep science also. So that's what I read. But thank you for that recommendation. I'll check out some of the readings that you have. All right. Um, Junior says, what is your definition of bliss? Oh, okay. Interesting question. Huh, never thought about that. I like that you asked what's my definition because you, you all need to have your own definitions of, of whatever it is, especially important things. Bliss? Uh, I would say my definition of bliss is... When I hear bliss, I think of a cool breeze. So my... The future of bliss will be like ease of doing something. Not easy. Ease. You see, there's a difference between ease and easy. And people confuse that, right? Easy is not much resistance, you know, doesn't take much effort. You know, logging on to this webinar is very easy. But listening and paying attention and absorbing the content. I can do that with ease if I focus my mind. So for me, bliss is being present in the moment. Yes, I would say that. Bliss for me is present in the moment. Thank you for putting me on the spot with that. It got me to think. So I, I, that's my definition. <laughs> All right, uh, Brian has another question. We have four more minutes. Do you charge clients for your services? How should creatives charge their clients for their services? Excellent question. And I intentionally didn't talk, didn't talk about that. I didn't talk about that because uh, maybe I can be invited again to talk about that. <laughs> because that, I, I can't talk about the, I couldn't talk about the charging until you understand what you're charging. You see, when you charge someone, you're asking them to re reward you with money because you have given them value. And until you understand the value you have, you will always want to charge yourself. And so for your question, I'm an accountant. I absolutely charge, right? And it's not because I love money or something like that. It's because I understand my value. For me to present what I presented today takes years of reading, years of trial and error, understanding, questioning, interviewing people, right? And you have to know how to cost that. One of the other challenges why creatives, and I do talks on this a lot, have a challenge pricing themselves, as uh, you subscribe to my YouTube channel, there's a video coming out on that. It's because we have a poor money mindset. We don't understand money. Some people think money is on one extreme, very, very good. We need it. We need to hustle for it. On the other end, some people say, look, I just want to create art. I just want to, you know, bless people. I don't think I should be paid for it. Those two extremes are equally bad, right? Saying that you don't need money, money is not good. People use it to manipulate for me, expresses a disconnect with how society works, right? Everything has a value. And the way we price things is through money. That's a common denominator. So you should price for it, not because you love money, but because money enables you to do other things. And there's, there's a gratification, right? There's a reward signal in our brains when we, when we are paid for something. I'll flip the script on you guys to answer the question. Have you ever gotten service so good or gotten a product so good that you pay even more? I hope they're not mean people on our webinar, right? I'm sure you've, ex who said they like traveling? I'm sure you've had an experience and someone said 500 shillings, but you give them 700 because you feel that gratitude. You've been given value. 
right? So why is it that if you create such value to someone, why should you not be rewarded, right? And there's a block, there's something blocking us why we have difficulty charging. We don't understand value. We don't understand how to put things in economic terms. I talk about it in the book because the book, I look at both sides of the brain, the right side, which is the artistic side. And I also look at the left side, which is the logical structured money side. You need to know how to identify clients. And I do programs about that. Um, so it's a very deep conversation. All right, one minute to go and I'll read the last comment. Um, it says, Barak says, I saw the math analogy from a different perspective, okay? The goal is what is after the equal sign. Aha, uh -huh. and the equation is what we need to work out. That's exactly right. To discover a simple way to achieve the goal, 10 plus zero is simple, true. 6.05 plus 3.95 is complicated. Yes, and many people don't want the complicated path. So what we do, we want to go look for a five and we want to look for a five. We want to look for an eight and a two. We don't realize we can get different paths. So we miss opportunities in life because we're just looking for whole numbers. And there are many things, every small thing matters. And that's what accountancy has taught me. Every decimal counts, every shilling counts. We can add them together and get something. Um, and you're telling me also that bliss for me is inward and outward contentment. I love that. Bliss is where mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual health are well aligned. I agree with that. Thank you so much for that insight. Yes, I, I agree with that. It's being at peace with yourself. It's being at peace. All right. Uh, we have come to the end of our broadcast. I want to be honest to our time. We were to end at 3.30. So for me, I want to thank you guys for um, registering, signing up. Please share with your friends. Uh, if you gain something of value here, let's spread this message. Creativity is in high demand. It's what's going to separate us. Um, we may be talking about it a lot now, but we'll see the real impact of it as the years go down. As the internet of things starts to supercharge our lives, the, the importance of creativity will be, you know, become ex, ex, exponential. All right. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I've left my contact details. Please take advantage of the offer of my book, I'm not trying to self-promote, but just trying to give you tools that you can use to, you know, live up, to think freely, to create unapologetically and to live abundantly. And, and so with that, I want to hand over to, um, I think I'm supposed to hand over to the administrators. Yes. If I'm not wrong. Um, but for me, that's, that's it for me. Um, you may now exit the, the aircraft. Please hold on to the rails as you go down. Um, don't forget any luggage in the overhead compartment. And please feel free to join our next flight. Bye-bye.